In many ways, the story of the Industrial Revolution is a story of human ingenuity, of people finding new ways to use the sources of energy available to them, and to profitably link these sources of energy with marvelous new machines that could more efficiently perform tasks that in the past had required long hours of hand labor. Let us look at one example of how machinery can save labor in the grinding of grain into flour. The traditional way of grinding grain, a method still in use in some parts of North America, is to simply rub the grain between two stones. Ancient European people used similar methods of making flour until at some point, many centuries before the Industrial Revolution, it was discovered that the power of the wind could be captured and used to turn grinding stones. Likewise, it was discovered that a flowing stream could also be used to turn a water wheel that in turn could move the millstones. These mills for producing flour are some of the oldest factories, for they replaced home-based, hand-powered flour making with a more efficient and profitable means of production. Because of a growing demand for manufactured goods in the mid-18th century, some of the same techniques for using water power found in grain mills began to be adapted to many other purposes, and new types of factories were created. The most dramatic changes in manufacturing that occurred at that time were in the way that cloth was made. Before industrialization, cloth making was strictly a cottage industry, performed by people working at home under contract to cloth merchants. The cloth merchant would bring the cottagers raw fibers of wool, cotton, or flax. These fibers were then spun into thread on spinning wheels as shown here. Every part of traditional thread spinning, from feeding the fibers onto the spindle, to pumping the treadles that turned the spinning wheel, relied totally on human energy. The same was true of weaving cloth from the spun threads on hand looms. Hand weaving was a slow, repetitive process, relying entirely upon human energy. Starting around 1760, the invention of several new and complicated machines truly revolutionized cloth making. And all of these new machines were rapidly adapted to use moving water as a source of power. The first new machine, called the spinning jenny, could do the work of 16 people working at 16 spinning wheels. A short time later, new, more advanced spinning machines were invented that could perform the work of thousands of hand spinners. And these machines killed the cottage spinning industry forever. And the home weavers were soon to meet the same fate as the spinners, as large new water-powered machines called power looms rapidly replaced hand weaving. Power looms wove the threads at dazzling speeds that human hands could never hope to match. As the use of new water-powered machines for textile manufacturing became widespread across England, large factory buildings like Quarry Bank Mill near Manchester began to appear on the banks of streams to shelter both the machines and the workers who operated them. With the creation of factories, the way that people lived began to change. Since the machines were too large and complicated to be placed in a cottage, it became necessary for this new generation of workers to travel to the new factories for employment. This shift from home to factory-based work was to dramatically alter English society as poor farm workers and unemployed weavers and spinners left the countryside, seeking dependable employment in newly forming industrial centers. <laughs>